If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to answer this question on your own before listening on. In order to come up with this function, it's going to be helpful to first make a sketch of a graph that represents the information that's being described. And so we have our standard y and x-axis for this graph. Along the x-axis, we're going to plot time. But as the question notes, we need to measure time in hours after midnight. So let's attach that label to our time. Now, along the y-axis, we're going to have the depth of the water, which is measured in meters. We've abbreviated the depth with a capital D, and then the unit of meters is shown. Now, the question notes that the lowest possible tide is going to be 2 meters. So on our y-axis, we can make a mark roughly here of 2 meters. And what we can do in order to really understand this is just draw a horizontal dotted line. Now, the question notes that the highest possible tide is located at 12 meters. So along our depth axis, we can make a mark right here, perhaps, and we can label that 12 meters. And again, we're going to make a horizontal dotted line. Now, we next note that, according to the question, the high tide occurred at 6.45 a.m. And so that means that at a time of 6.45 a.m., we could make a point located at the highest tide. And before we draw that curve, we want to sort of move straight down until we reach the time axis. And we recall that we're measuring time in hours after midnight. Now, a time of 6.45 a.m. would be 6.75 hours after midnight. The 0.75 comes from the fact that we have 6 hours and 45 minutes. But if we divide 45 minutes by 60 minutes per hour, that would become the 0.75 hours. And then we have the 6 as well. So at a time of 6.75, which we can mark on our time axis about right here, the tide will be at its highest position. And then the tide flows and moves to its lowest position. And we are given a hint that it's going to be a cosine function. So we know that the tide is going to follow a sort of curved trajectory until it reaches its lowest tide, which might be right here. And then eventually it's going to turn around and come back up until it gets to highest tide. And this would actually complete one full cycle of our cosine function. We could draw a second cycle, but it isn't necessary to do so. And the question notes that the period of oscillation is 12 hours. What that means is that the time required to begin at high tide, move all the way down to low, and then return to high tide is going to be 12 hours. So at this point right here, when we return back to high tide, we know that this length of time from where it had started to where it had completed that cycle is 12 hours. And that is essentially what is known as the period of this function, and we're going to return back to that shortly. Now, for a standard cosine function, we have to make sure that we follow the following equation. And in this equation, we have four capital letters whose values we must determine in order to answer this question. We have capital A, B, C, and D. Now, we're not going to necessarily find the value of these letters in alphabetical order. In fact, it turns out that finding D first is going to be easiest. Now, what is D? D represents what I like to call the midline of this cosine graph. So if we return back to our cosine graph, we know that the highest tide was 12 and the lowest was 2. What we want to know is the middle of those two values. There's essentially a horizontal line that cuts right through the middle of our cosine graph. And to find that value, actually, all you have to do is take the average of these two numbers, of the high tide and the low tide. Now, of course, to take the average, we just add them together and divide by 2. So if we have 12 plus 2 and then divide by 2, we end up with 14 divided by 2, which, of course, is 7. So the value of this midline is actually 7, and that's going to be the value of D. So we've come down here and we've plugged in 7 for that value of D. The next easiest number to find, perhaps, is this capital A, which stands for the amplitude. Now, the amplitude is simply measured from the midline to either the highest value or from the midline to the lowest value. You should get the same value in either case. So for example, from 7 to 12 is a value of 5. From 7 to 2 is also a value of 5. So that simply means that the amplitude of this cosine graph is 5. And that means we can plug in 5 for A. Next, we will find the value of C. And actually, C is simply the 
x coordinate of where your curve begins its cycle. I'll say that again because that's very important. C will simply be the x coordinate of where your curve begins its cycle. Now the way that we have drawn the curve, we can see that it began right here. And the x coordinate of that starting point is simply 6.75. So all we have to do is come over here and plug in 6.75 for the value of C. Now the only letter that's left to find is uppercase B. And it turns out that uppercase B is equal to 2 pi divided by whatever the period of your cosine curve is. Now earlier we said that the period of this cosine curve was 12. The period is simply the distance along the x-axis from the starting point to the finishing point of the cycle. And we can see that that distance is indeed 12. So we're going to be plugging in 12 for the period giving us 2 pi over 12. And then when we reduce this fraction by dividing numerator and denominator by 2, we're going to end up with pi over 6. So that becomes the value of b. And lo and behold, we have the final answer to the question. This becomes the cosine function that models the scenario described in the question. Of course, if we wish, we can change y to d of t, since we had plotted depth as a function of time. And with that change, we have the final form of the answer. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, please subscribe so you could stay tuned for similar videos. And remember that you can send in your own question to the email address that's on your screen, and I'll do my best to post the solution to it on YouTube.